A Brief History of Herculaneum, Missouri, 1808-2021 to Brought to you by the Herculaneum, Missouri Historical Society. Native Americans in Herculaneum the earliest evidence of human life in the Herculaneum area can be found in the petroglyphs in the limestone bluffs. The petroglyphs are believed to be the work of the Cahokia Middle Mississippi culture and are thought to be made by the Cahokia Indians who occupied the area between 900 and 1350 A.D. One of the original inhabitants were the Osage Indians, who had a nomadic lifestyle and traveled the area around Herculaneum in quest of buffalo and gathering of food. During the late 1700s and early 1800s, several settlers in the area were killed by the savage Osage tribes as they attempted to carve a place out of the wilderness for themselves and their families. Up to 1800, buffalo and elk were plentiful, but with the advance of civilization, these animals disappeared or kept a safe distance from the approaching settlements. There were other Indian tribes that may have lived in the area for a brief time, as they moved westward in advance of the white man's push on the frontier. The Delaware, Cherokee, and possibly the Shawnee were some of the Indian tribes to have been in the area. Early Exploration and Control of the Herculaneum Area Following the discovery of America in 1492, Spain sent many explorers into the New World to learn about the area. Hernando de Soto led the first expedition deep into the present-day United States, including Missouri, and is believed to be the first white man to discover the Mississippi River. It is believed that no other Spanish people came into the area for 200 years. As European countries explored the New World, five countries, England, Spain, France, the Netherlands, and Sweden, laid claim to wide expanses of land. In 1682, French explorers claimed the land for France and began to explore the area as they were interested in the fur trade and spreading Christianity to the Indians. The French also wanted to stop the expansion of the British colonies. Early Exploration and Control of the Herculaneum Area In 1762, France ceded the area to Spain. In 1783, the land area of North America was divided between the United States east of the Mississippi River, the Spanish West, and the British, losing its claim east of the Mississippi, had only land known as Canada. In 1801, France was again taking control of this vast area of land. From the Mississippi to the Rocky Mountains from Spain, President Jefferson was interested in the port of New Orleans and sent James Monroe and Robert Livingston to France to buy the port. However, France, under Napoleon, realized their inability to hold this territory from British takeover, sold the entire Louisiana Territory to the United States. Therefore, the land in which Herculaneum is located has been under the flags of three nations, Spain, France, and the United States. First Protestant Sermon West of the Mississippi River In 1798, John Clark, an Illinois Methodist minister, held one of the first Protestant services while standing in a boat on the Mississippi River. A handful of American settlers in the Mississippi Territory stood on the Mississippi Riverbank and listened to the first Protestant sermon preached west of the Mississippi. This service was held at the then Rock Catholic Spanish Joachim Rock Landing at Herculaneum. Founders of Herculaneum the town of Herculaneum was founded in 1808 by Moses Austin, the Lead King, 
and Samuel Hammond as a shipping point for the lead being mined in Washington County. Moses Austin, founder of Herculaneum. Moses Austin was the prototypical entrepreneur. Born October 4, 1761 in Connecticut, Austin moved to Virginia where he began a lifelong career with minerals. At the age of 35 years, Austin came to St. Louis. He made his way to St. Genevieve and eventually to Breton Creek in the middle of the Lead District. He built his home, Durham Hall, on the banks of a river in Washington County. Austin revolutionized the mining and smelting of lead. Seeing the need for a shipping port for his lead, he purchased several acres of land near the mouth of the Joachim Creek. The land was purchased in partnership with Samuel Hammond. Austin laid out the town of Herculaneum and began selling lots on his tract of land. Austin named the new town Herculaneum. The name Herculaneum was used because the rock terraced cliffs along the Mississippi River were suggestive of Herculaneum, Italy, named after the Greek god Hercules. Samuel Hammond, founder of Herculaneum. Samuel Hammond's lengthy career as a businessman, a soldier, and public official earned him recognition in the histories of Georgia, Missouri, and Carolina. Hammond was born in Richmond County, Virginia on September 21, 1757. After Congress created a government for the newly acquired Louisiana Territory in 1804, President Thomas Jefferson appointed Colonel Hammond as the civil and military commandant of the Upper Louisiana St. Louis Subdistrict. Hammond moved to St. Louis in 1804. He was actively involved in land speculation, lead mining, and banking. In 1808, he and Moses Austin founded the town of Herculaneum to serve as a river depot for lead shipments from nearby Mine of Britain. Lead Shot Towers in Herculaneum Within a year of the town's founding, lead shot towers began to spring up in Herculaneum along the Mississippi River. John Macklow built the first shot tower in 1809, followed by a second tower built by Moses Austin and a third tower built by Christian Wilt and John Honey. Lead shot ammunition produced at the Macklot shot tower was used most notably at the Battle of New Orleans on January 6, 1815 during the War of 1812. Herculaneum, where shot was made for the War of 1812. One of 41 lunettes, arch-shaped murals, displayed in the Missouri State Capitol in Jefferson City. Herculaneum Shot Tower Dedication The old Herculaneum Shot Tower site was commemorated on March 26, 1926, by the United States Daughters of 1812 and the St. Joseph Lead Company with a dedication ceremony and plaque placement on the bluff where the first lead shot tower was erected by John Macleod. The Macleod Shot Tower was the first shot tower erected west of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sketch of Herculaneum Shot Tower a sketch of Herculaneum as it appeared on a $20 banknote issued by the Bank of St. Louis in 1817. The sketch shows a shot tower and furnace on the bluffs along the Mississippi River. Founders Moses Austin and Samuel Hammond were major investors in the Bank of St. Louis. Campbell Morfitt, noted chemist. Camel Morfitt, a noted chemist of the 1800s, was born in Herculaneum on November 19, 1820. He was educated at Columbia University, Georgetown, D.C., but moved to Philadelphia. 
he became a professor of applied chemistry at the University of Maryland. He later moved on to New York and then to London, England. He published numerous scientific papers and several books related to chemistry and manufacturing that included being the co-editor of the Encyclopedia of Chemistry, 1851. Herculaneum Masonic Lodge before the acquisition of the Louisiana Territory by the United States, there were no organized Masons in the area. As colonists began arriving from the East and South, they brought Masonry to the Missouri Territory. By the time Missouri was organized as a state in 1821, there were three chartered lodges within the Missouri Territory, all working under the Grand Lodge of Tennessee number 12 in St. Louis, number 25 in Herculaneum, and number 28 in St. Charles. The Joachim Lodge, number 25, received its charter from the Grand Lodge of Tennessee on October 6, 1819. In 1821, the Joachim Lodge, number 25, was changed to Joachim Lodge, number 2. The records of the Joachim Lodge were lost due to an earthquake and a fire. Due to the fires and the slowdown of the lead industry, the Joachim Lodge was arrested in 1825. With the move of the county seat to Hillsborough, the Hillsborough Lodge No. 164 was chartered in 1856. Herculaneum Masonic Lodge No. 338 in Order of the Eastern Star No. 325 after the arrest of the Joachim Lodge in 1825, the Herculaneum community was without a lodge until the Herculaneum Masonic Lodge No. 338 was chartered in 1923, followed by the charter of Eastern Star Chapter No. 325. Construction of a new temple began in 1936 and was occupied in January of 1938. Both organizations remained active until the Masonic Hall was purchased by the Doe Run Company and demolished in 2016. Once again, the Herculaneum Masonic Lodge ceased to exist. Daniel Dunklin, 5th Governor of Missouri Daniel Dunklin, the 5th Governor of Missouri, was born in Greenville, South Carolina on January 14, 1790. His family moved to Kentucky after his father died, and in 1810, Dunklin and his mother moved to Mine Isle, Breton, now known as Potosi, in Washington County. He served in the War of 1812 and returned to Washington County, where he worked in the farming and mining industries of Potosi. He was elected Washington County Sheriff in 1815 and served for four years. Elected to the Missouri House of Representatives in 1822, he served in that position for one year. Elected Lieutenant Governor in 1828 and Missouri Governor in 1832. As Governor, Dunklin was known as the father of the Missouri Public Schools. He was responsible for the Missouri public school system and the establishment of the University of Missouri and for the reform of the Missouri penal system. He resigned as governor with three months before the end of his term. He was then named the Surveyor General for Missouri and Illinois by President Andrew Johnson. He is responsible for naming all Missouri counties south of the Missouri River. Thomas C. Fletcher, 18th Governor of Missouri Thomas C. Fletcher, the first native-born governor of Missouri, was born in Herculaneum on January 21, 1827. Fletcher and his brother-in-law, Louis Rankin, laid out the town of DeSoto, Missouri. He helped to organize the Republican Party in Missouri. He was a Civil War veteran and led the Union forces at the Battle of Pilot Knob. For his service during the Civil War, he was named Brigadier General by President Abraham Lincoln. He was elected the 18th Governor of Missouri in 1864. During his term as Governor, the Missouri public school system was thoroughly reorganized. In 
By executive order, Fletcher ended slavery in Missouri almost one year before slavery was ended in the United States. Fletcher served one term as governor. Daniel Dunklin Gravesite In 1840, Daniel Dunklin purchased a large tract of land in Herculaneum and moved his family from Potosi. Dunklin called his new home Mage. Dunklin farmed for three years before receiving an appointment as a commissioner by Governor Reynolds to be Missouri's representative to adjust and designate the boundary between Missouri and Arkansas. In 1844, Dunklin made a visit to Jefferson City and on his return was caught in a severe storm and developed pneumonia. His condition worsened and on August 25, 1844, Dunklin passed away at his home. He was buried on August 27, 1844. He was buried in a small field near his home. Dunklin's grave was eventually moved to an area on the southeast edge of his property on a high cliff overlooking the Mississippi River. Dunklin's grave historic site is in Herculaneum and includes the graves of his wife, great-grandson, his daughter, and his grandson. First Post Office in Jefferson County Although the date of establishment is not known, the first post office in what will become Jefferson County was in Herculaneum. Records indicate that an official report was filed with the Postmaster General on October 11, 1811. The first postmaster was Charles A. Austin. Mail was delivered to Herculaneum from St. Louis by riverboats. From Herculaneum, the mail was delivered to other areas of the county by horseback. Following the move of the county seat from Herculaneum to Hillsboro in 1839 and the decline of the lead industry, Herculaneum lost its importance in the area. The original Herculaneum post office ceased to function in 1858. Re-establishment of the Herculaneum post office in 1890, as the St. Joseph Lead Company began construction of their lead smelter and the Mississippi River and Bonterre Railway began operation, the town of Herculaneum found new life. A post office was re-established in Herculaneum and Fremont S. Laird was named the first postmaster of the new post office on June 19, 1890. During this period, the mail was delivered daily by way of the MR and BT railway trains. First Circuit Court held in Herculaneum Circuit Court Record No. 1 of the Office of the Circuit Court recites that the First Circuit Court of the Northern Circuit of the Missouri Territory was held in the town of Herculaneum on March 22, 1819, with Nathaniel Beverly Tucker presiding as Judge of the Northern Circuit. During the first year of the existence of Jefferson County and until Missouri was admitted to the Union as a state, the Circuit Court in Herculaneum had jurisdiction and transacted all the county business. First County Seat of Jefferson County Following the organization of Jefferson County by an act of the legislature of the Territory of Missouri, the county was approved on December 8, 1819. Although created in December of 1818, the County of Jefferson was not vested with full powers until January 1, 1819. The Act further provided Herculaneum would be the place where the first county court would be held. The county court would be part of the Northern Judicial Circuit. First Jefferson County Court held in Herculaneum when Missouri was admitted to the Union, the law provided for the organization of a county court in each county. The first justices of the county court of Jefferson County met and organized and held their first session in Herculaneum on May 14, 1821. All county business pending in the circuit court was transferred to the county court, and the circuit court had no further jurisdiction. 
The first county jail was built by Josiah Kraft on a site for public buildings in Herculaneum. The jail consisted of a small log building. First County Jail in Jefferson County The first Jefferson County Jail was built by Josiah Kraft in Herculaneum on land designated for the construction of public buildings. The first sheriff of Jefferson County was Andrew Scott. Pictured to the left is a replica of the key for the Jefferson County Jail. Herculaneum in the early 1820s a bulletin published in St. Louis in 1821 had this to say about Herculaneum, the county seat. Herculaneum, a town of 200 souls, 20 horses, one store, one blacksmith, one hatter, and two shot towers. Lots in Herculaneum were boomed with the announcement that the town of St. Louis is dependent on Herculaneum for hundreds of barrels of flour and many thousand barrels of whiskey annually. It is estimated that the produce of wheat this season in Herculaneum will amount to 150,000 bushels, the most of which will concentrate at Herculaneum for export. The growth of Herculaneum and the movement of people and products through there naturally attracted a semi-lawless group looking for a fast dollar and, as a result, caused much trouble for the frontier town. This situation was probably aggravated by the many fugitives from justice in the eastern states who had followed the lure of high wages and possibly hiding in the wilderness lead mines of Jefferson and Washington counties. Charles Bunyan Parsons. Charles Bunyan Parsons is called the mastermind of the St. Joseph Lead Company. Becoming associated with the company in 1867, Parsons was very influential in locating of the St. Joe Lead Company smelter in Herculaneum. Parsons was also instrumental in the Mississippi River and Bonterre Railway, Bonterre Farming and Cattle Company, and other companies. He is also credited with the establishment of the town of Bonterre. Parsons built a palatial mansion in Herculaneum on property that at one time was owned by Governor Daniel Dunklin. Mississippi River and Bonterre Railway Prior to the construction of the Iron Mountain Railroad to Pilot Knob in 1858, the products of the mines in the Lead Belt region of the state were hauled to St. Genevieve and Herculaneum by ox cart and then transported to the Mississippi River. The St. Joseph Lead Company needed a more cost-effective transportation route for its products in St. Francis County to the company's new smelter in Herculaneum. The Mississippi River and Bonterre Railway, MR and BT, was incorporated on May 11, 1888 by the St. Joseph Lead Company. The MR and BT carried heavy traffic and handled an extremely heavy commodity so it was constructed very substantially. Until 1929, four passenger trains ran every day from Bonterre to St. Louis using the Iron Mountain Rails to St. Louis. In 1929, the MR and BT was acquired by the Missouri Pacific Railroad and was incorporated into the new Missouri-Illinois Railroad. St. Joseph Lead Company in 1887, the St. Joseph Lead Company purchased 540 acres along the Mississippi River in Herculaneum to build a lead processing smelter. Construction began in 1890, and the smelter began operation in 1892. A landmark in Herculaneum was the 350 feet smokestack built in 1910. The original smokestack was replaced in 1995 by a 550 feet smokestack. Herculaneum in the early 1900s. 
The St. Joseph Lead Company was one of the largest plants in the state. The smelter was modernly equipped and had a brick smokestack, the second largest and tallest in the United States being 350 feet in height. The smokestack remained in use until being replaced in the mid-1990s. Herculaneum in the early 1900s in the early 1900s and 1910s, the town of Herculaneum was described as a town that has built up around the large smelting works of the St. Joe Lead Company and the liberal policy of the company in building homes for the workmen and furnishing electric light, waterworks, sewage, free baths, and good streets have made Herculaneum a most desirable place of residence. The city has a population of 1,800 Thrift and energy are noticed on every hand, and creditable business buildings occupy the center of town. Herculaneum in the early 1900s. The town has a first-class bank and eight other business houses. There is an up-to-date hotel, a large lumber yard, a planing mill and garage, three mercantile establishments, churches, picture shows, a barber shop, a dentist, funeral home, a car dealership, and a Knights of Pythias, K.P. Hall. In fact, it has everything to make it a good lively town and trade center of importance. St. Louis Sioux Bear Pits In 1919, under the direction of William Hoff, Victor Borchert of the St. Louis Sioux made 116 mold casts of sections of the limestone cliffs in Herculaneum. The casts were used as forms for the bear pits at the zoo. The casts were taken from the cliffs along the Mississippi River near Moses Austin 1810 Shot Tower. The bear pits molded from the early casts in Herculaneum are still a prominent feature at the zoo. County seat moved from Herculaneum to Hillsboro. Inasmuch as no steps were taken for the building of a courthouse in Herculaneum for several years after the county was organized, it seemed that an early removal of the county seat was anticipated. The removal of the county seat from Herculaneum was declared by an act of the legislature of the state and approved February 8, 1839. During the construction of the courthouse in Hillsboro, county business continued to be transacted in Herculaneum. The county court held its first session in Hillsboro in 1840, effectively ending Herculaneum's time as the county seat. Town of Herculaneum 1920s through 1990s from the beginning of the St. Joseph Lead Company coming to town in the late 1890s, the company provided many of the services to the unincorporated town, including water, sewers, streetlight, electricities, streets, a library, and fire protection. The company built numerous rental houses for their employees and allowed residents to use the company showers. Most of the retail businesses were concentrated in the downtown area and an upper business district both across from the company plant. Beginning in the 1940s, the St. Joseph Lead Company started lessening their paternalistic control of the town. The company began to charge a fee for water and sell off many of their rental properties to employees and other residents. As time progressed, the company control of the town continued to decrease, although the company continued to support the area schools, fire department, and other organizations in town. With the incorporation of the city in 1972, all municipal services were provided by the new city. Incorporation of Herculaneum, 1972. Throughout the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s, the idea of incorporating Herculaneum as a city was a topic of discussion.
It was not until 1968 that a real effort was made to incorporate the town. Early opposition came from the St. Joe Lead Company. An interesting quirk in the incorporation plans was that old circuit court records showed that Herculaneum was incorporated on July 27, 1819. However, Herculaneum was never incorporated under modern state law and had never carried on the functions of a city. On April 7, 1971, a petition was filed in the Jefferson County Circuit Court asking for Herculaneum to be incorporated. After being taken under advisement, the Jefferson County Circuit Court ruled that the 1819 incorporation was being reactivated and that Herculaneum could officially function as a city. The End of the Herculaneum Business Districts Beginning in the late 1960s and continuing into the 1990s, the St. Joe Lead Company began to purchase the old downtown and uptown business areas. With time, the old buildings dating back to the early 1900s were purchased and demolished as the company expanded to the west and began to isolate the plant from the business and residential areas. The last buildings were demolished in the late 1990s. Voluntary Property Purchase by the Doe Run Company The impact of lead contamination in Herculaneum on the health of the residents is complex in nature and is well documented by various environmental and health agencies. Beginning in 1991, the Doe Run Company participated in a soil replacement program for residential yards with high levels of lead and in proximity of the smelter. The soil replacement program was expanded to all residential areas of the city in the 2000s. In 2001, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources signed an administrative order on consent with Doe Run to control and clean up a wide array of contamination. The AOC went into effect on May 29, 2001 and required new controls on air emissions, remediation of lead contaminated residential yards, and investigation and stabilization of a contaminated slag pile located in the Mississippi River floodplain. A centerpiece of the AOC and other settlements between the Doe Run Company and government agencies was the Voluntary Property Purchase Program. The agreement required the Doe Run Company to purchase homes within a defined area. The defined area contained approximately 160 homes for which the Doe Run Company was required to make an offer for by December 31, 2004. These are aerial views of the voluntary property purchase area of Herculaneum. To the left was the property before the buyout and to the right after the buyout. As a result of the Voluntary Property Purchase Program, the older part of town surrounding the lead smelter became essentially a ghost town. Except for just a few occupied houses, the streets became home to empty houses and within a few years the houses were demolished. Another agreement between the Doe Run Company and government agencies resulted in the purchase of 10 acres of city streets in the buyout area to create a buffer zone around the smelter. As part of this agreement, the company was required to construct a fence to mark the new buffer zone. The fence remains in place in 2021 as seen in the photo. Doe Run Company ceases smelting operations. In 2013, after 121 years of operating the Herculaneum lead smelter, the Doe Run Company ceased all smelting operations at the smelter. After years of attempting to keep up with all environmental regulations, it became evident that the company could not feasibly continue to operate.
Within a few years, the company demolished many of the physical buildings and structures on the company property. In 2021, the company continues to refine secondary lead into primary lead at the company refinery. Herculaneum Schools The earliest buildings of an educational system in Herculaneum dates to 1815, when the first school was established by a Mr. Wilson. For the next 75 years, the education of Herculaneum students was operated on a subscription basis. By 1890, there was enrollment of 50 students in Herculaneum being educated in a one-room schoolhouse on School Street. In 1904, a rectangular four-room schoolhouse was built with two rooms on each side. This schoolhouse would be destroyed by fire in 1907. Following the destruction of the 1904 schoolhouse, a new schoolhouse was built on the same site, and this building would remain as the Herculaneum Public School for five years. In 1912, an eight-room brick schoolhouse would be built in the center of town. Additions were made to the 1912 building in 1919 and 1924. The building would be destroyed by a Christmas Day fire in 1947 and rebuilt. The new building opened in 1949. This building would continue as the Herculaneum High School until 2010 when it was demolished and replaced with a new school building. Herculaneum High School Throughout the years, several additions were made around the 1949 school building, including a gymnasium, a theater, home economics classrooms, science classrooms, and shop classrooms. In 2010, the original 1912-1949 school building was demolished and replaced with a new building to serve as the Herculaneum High School. Herculaneum Public Schools in 1949, construction began on a separate building to house the elementary age students. The school contained six classrooms and an office. For the first time in the history of Herculaneum, elementary and high school age children would be educated in separate buildings, except for kindergarten students. A kindergarten classroom, gymnasium, cafeteria, and additional classrooms were added in the mid-1950s renamed the Roy E. Taylor Elementary School in 1958, the building is still used by the Dunklin R5 School District as an early education center. Sin Thomas Middle School. In 1970, the Dunklin R5 School District constructed a building containing 10 classrooms, a cafeteria, and multi-purpose room. The facility was dedicated on April 18, 1971, and named for two longtime Board of Education members, Dr. Emmett J. Sin and Roy Thomas. A second phase of construction included 14 additional classrooms, a library, and a larger cafeteria multi-purpose room in 1973. In 1983, the district opened a new gymnasium and physical education building east of the Sin Thomas building. The building is still in use today. Douglas Elementary School. Prior to 1912, there was no public school in Herculaneum for the black students. Black students had to rely on being educated in reading and arithmetic by their parents, grandparents, relatives, and friends with some help from the church. With the construction of the new public school in 1912, the 1907 schoolhouse was moved to the black community and became the first Douglas Elementary School in Herculaneum. A new one-room Douglas schoolhouse was built in 1951 and housed grades 1 through 8. High school age students either quit school after the 8th grade or traveled to the Douglas High School in a neighboring community. In 1955, the first black students were allowed to attend the Herculaneum High School, followed by the elementary students attending the Herculaneum Elementary School in 1957. 
the 1951 Douglas Elementary School is still standing in 2021. Assumption Catholic School in 1920, the Assumption Catholic Church in Herculaneum established the first Assumption School. The school was held in the basement of the church. As enrollment increased in the parish school, so did the need for more educational space. In 1937, the parish constructed a two-story brick building next to the church. The new school contained two classrooms, grades one through eight, and a basement with a stage. The Assumption School continued to operate until 1966, when it officially was closed. The building was later purchased by the Doe Run Company and demolished. Stone Bleachers at Herculaneum Athletic Field one of the most recognizable and oldest structures still located in Herculaneum are the stone bleachers at the high school athletic field. Built in the mid-1930s as a Works Progress Administration, or WPA, project, the bleachers and athletic field remain in use today. The stone bleachers were completely refurbished, including ADA improvements in the early 2010s. The bleachers remain a focal point of the high school campus and an important part of the history of Herculaneum. First Baptist Church of Herculaneum One of the earliest churches in the town was the First Baptist Church of Herculaneum, organized on December 17, 1908. The church building on Church Street was originally a free will church that was erected in 1893. Through the years, many additions were made to the original church, including raising the church onto a basement and adding a baptistry. The church continued to serve the Herculaneum community until destroyed by fire on February 15, 1991. Buren Chapel AME. Although the cornerstone of the church dates the building as 1908, it is not the true date that the church was established. The church building has been moved from the original location to the current location as a result of a trade of land between the St. Joseph Lead Company and the church. The trade of land occurred due to a road project in the area. The Buren Chapel AME has met the needs of the Herculaneum Black community spiritually, physically, and socially for over 125 years. The Buren Chapel AME Church building still stands and serves the Black community today. Assumption Catholic Church Seeing a need for a parish in the town of Herculaneum, the Catholics organized the Assumption Catholic Church, Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in 1916. The church building located on Station Street was constructed in 1917. In the late 1960s, the church was remodeled and the altar was moved from the north end of the building to the south end. The church continued to serve the Catholic community until 2016 when the church was closed. The church was eventually sold to the Doe Run Company and later demolished. United Methodist Church of Herculaneum The United Methodist Church of Herculaneum was organized in 1914. In 1916, the church built its first church, a stucco building, on land overlooking the Mississippi River. In the mid-1950s, numerous additions were made to the church building. In the early 1960s, the entrance was lowered and the building received a new brick facing. The United Methodist Church of Herculaneum continues to serve the Methodist community today. Herculaneum Assembly of God Church In the year 1922, several families began meeting in a three-room house on Circle Street to hold church services. A decision was made to build a sanctuary directly across the street. Within a year or two, the church split into two congregations, with one congregation moving to an old broom factory. Eventually, the church moved to an old Episcopalian church on Main Street. In the 1940s, the church purchased 
the original Circle Street Sanctuary and moved back to that location. In 1956, the church built a new sanctuary near Highway 6167. The church remains at that location in 2021. All other buildings used by the church have been demolished. Riverview Commerce Park Industrial Port Following the cessation of smelting operations, the Riverview Commerce Park LLC purchased several acres of land from the Doe Run Company. The land was purchased for the purpose of developing an industrial port in Jefferson County. The development of the first port facility began in 2012. The Riverview Commerce Park Terminal is a private facility with barge loading and unloading capabilities. This facility is in the city of Herculaneum on property formerly used for the production and distribution of lead. The facility opened in 2013 and is currently shipping bulk commodities. The facility is concentrating on the shipment of sand through the terminal, but expansion of the facility has allowed for the shipping of other commodities by barge and rail. This project represents a substantial part of the economic future of Herculaneum and Jefferson County. Total solar eclipse occurs in Herculaneum. On August 21, 2017, the city of Herculaneum experienced the first total solar eclipse in Herculaneum since 1442. For two minutes and 32 seconds, the most anywhere in the U.S. was two minutes and 40 seconds, the sun was totally blocked by the moon. The next total solar eclipse in Herculaneum will take place in 2505. In 2024, Herculaneum will have 99.7 blockage of the sun by the moon, but it will not be total here. New subdivisions being built in Herculaneum. With the loss of 160 homes in the older part of town due to the Doe Run Company Voluntary Buyout Program, the population of Herculaneum suffered a significant reduction in number. Three large subdivisions in the western part of the city were constructed in the 1990s 2000s and continue to develop into 2021. The three subdivisions, Prairies at Friedberg, Providence and Stonewater are all located west of Interstate 55. New Recreational Facilities in City Park The Herculaneum City Park has been in existence for many years, but was primarily an open area with baseball fields. In the 2000s, several additions were made to the facilities in the park. In 2007, the Joachim Loop Trail was constructed. In 2008, four baseball softball fields were constructed with two of the fields having lights. In 2012, All Bark Village, a one-acre off-leash dog park, is added to the park. In 2015, Cade's Playground, an all-inclusive volcano-themed playground, was built and is the jewel of the park. In 2019, the Bay of Naples Splash Zone was added to the park. Numerous community events are held in the park annually. Commercial Area of Herculaneum In the 1900s, the commercial area of Herculaneum was in the older section of the town, next to the lead company smelter. Businesses remained in the downtown area through the 1960s, 1970s, until the lead company began purchasing the buildings and demolishing them. In the late 1990s and into the 2000s, the commercial area of Herculaneum has relocated to the area along the Interstate 55 corridor and the McNutt Street area. The new area includes car dealerships, convenience stores, gas stations, eating establishments, a bank, mercantile stores, and a variety of other businesses. 
Thank you for joining us on this brief tour of the history of Herculaneum, Missouri. This program was put together by Bill Haggard, who is president of the Herculaneum Historical Society, and read to you by Mindy Hudson, who is in charge of the genealogy at Jefferson County Library. Check on some of our other links to find out about other places in Jefferson County.